let's build your Drop Karina keyboard. We'll start by checking if all parts are there. Besides your keyboard kit, you also need to purchase a switch plate, keycaps, and switches if you don't have them already. During checkout, you can purchase three different plates made of aluminum, brass, or copper. Each one has a different feel and sound. You also need MX style switches and keycaps. MX style switches have a movable stem with a plus sign with or without a raised border. On the bottom, you should see two offset metal pins. You can use plate or PCB mounted switches as the Karina PCBA has the cutouts for both. Let's check your keyboard kit. You'll have a circuit board and acrylic case. As well, there will be a USB-C cable, switch puller, four brass standoffs, four screws, 10 inserts and 10 housings for stabilizers, one long and four short stabilizer bars. You'll also need a Phillips head precision screwdriver. A keycap puller is helpful but not required. If you have everything, let's start building. Pick up your PCBA so it looks like this with the raised components on the bottom. Angle and gently lower the USB-C ports into the two cutouts before lowering the rest of the circuit board. Ensure the grooves on the PCBA are aligned with the case. After, grab your brass standoffs, thread and tighten them by hand through each of these four holes into the inserts below. Now, let's plug in the keyboard and check if everything is working. You should see that each switch location's LED is lit. As well, check if the rear LEDs have turned on. If that's good, unplug your keyboard. Let's build your stabilizer, which is made from two inserts, two housings, and one metal bar. If you prefer quiet sounding stabilizers, you can lube or grease them. The long and short stabilizers are built the same way. You'll start by picking up an insert and housing. Align the parts as shown on screen, then drop the insert into the housing. If successful, you should see the stem sticking through. If it's backwards, the stem won't go all the way through. To fix that, let the insert fall out, flip it around, and put it back in. Next, we'll insert the stabilizing bar. It goes through this opening on the housing and through the bottom hole on the insert. Align the two parts, insert the bar, and it should look like this at the end. On the bottom, the bar should go through the insert. If it refuses to go all the way, the bar was placed too high up on the insert. Pull the bar out, push the insert up, and try again. If that's good, you can press the bar into the groove below and you should hear a click. All the parts will stay together and rotating the bar will pop the insert up. Repeat the same process for the other side and you've built a stabilizer. You'll need to build the remaining units so you have one long and four short stabilizers in total. Once complete, Take your switch plate and position it so you have these three cutouts on the right side. Next, we'll add stabilizers to the switch plate. Rotate each one so the bar faces towards the bottom. Drop the bar through the cutout, pull down until both stabilizer ends are seated, then push it into place. Do the other four in the same way. Next, we'll add switches to the four corners. This is an important step to line the circuit board and prevent damage during assembly. You'll start by picking up a switch and checking if the pins are straight. If any are bent, you'll want to gently straighten them using a precision tip tool. For the corners, the pins will be at the bottom. To insert, center the switch over the plate and press firmly until seated. Next, place the top plate over the PCBA and wiggle it around until it feels firm, which means the pins are nested into the hot swap sockets. Press down on opposing corners to seat the switches. If that's good, Take your screws and secure the plate through these four holes. Start from the middle screw and work outwards so the pressure is evenly distributed. Once everything is tight, let's add your switches. The Karina requires a special installation method to avoid damaging your switches. You'll need to install from the outside to the middle for each row, alternating from side to side. It's especially important for the number row, but it's best to do the same for all rows. Otherwise, if you start in the middle, the plate has a lot of flex. Your switch may not go in straight and bend the pins. To install a switch, rotate it so the pins face the bottom of the keyboard so they line up with the hot swap sockets. To insert, center the switch over the plate. You want to make sure all sides are level so the pins can easily slide down into the socket. Use two fingers, push straight down with even pressure to seat the switch. Once all switches are in, let's check if everything is working. Plug your USB-C cable into your keyboard and computer. You should see all your keys lighting up. 
If that's good, let's check each switch using KeyboardTester.com as it gives an audible beep if a key is pressed. Note that pressing the function key by itself will not show anything. You'll need a combo like function and number one to see if the key is working. If there's a problem, press the switch down firmly to make sure it's fully seated. If you still have trouble, remove it using your switch puller. Place the tips into these groove slots above and below the switch. Squeeze firmly to depress the tabs and pull straight up and check for damage. If everything looks good, let's add keycaps. Follow this photo for the default layout. To install a keycap, line up the center with the stem of your switch and press down until it's fully seated. Repeat for the rest of the board. Congrats, you've built the Karina. Enjoy using your new keyboard.